physics, which I don't like, but again, if I can learn to do it, you can learn to do it too. You, somebody decided it was a great idea, like we talked before, was the internal energy of the system. So you have to be able to know what the system is. This is all the energy that is inside the system. We don't quantify that directly. Instead, we look at the change. The change using Q plus W, where Q is heat, W is work. Again, I don't like these very much, but they are necessary. We already said that work is force that acts through a distance or in this case where we're changing the volume where we're, we have pressure here. So work in this case is negative of P is for pressure, just like in gas laws. V is volume, so change in volume. So when we put these together, so we put this one into this one up here, change in the system is heat, this is in a cylinder, minus pressure times the volume change because this here represents work this is just a derivation so if the system expands meaning it gets bigger uh, work is done if the system gets bigger work is done on the surroundings i didn't put that there surroundings work done by the system on the surroundings is positive or negative negative yes negative Work done by the system is negative. Work done on the system is positive. Heat leaving the system is negative. Heat gained by the system is positive. Prepositions matter. All right. So we don't want to deal with volume changes because in chemistry we hate physics. So we're just going to deal with it. We found a way to get around it. So we're going to keep the volume constant. When we keep the volume constant, somebody thought this was a good idea, probably because they think delta U is stupid. And they said, well, let's call it delta E because that makes more sense because E means energy. So I kind of like delta E, but delta E and delta U in this case mean the same thing. Told you it gets confusing. Told you I hate thermochemistry. But the cool thing is we call this a bomb calorimeter. We will not be using bomb calorimeters in the lab, at least right now. Uh, I think I may actually have a bomb calorimeter, but it's over in the physics department in crowns. But anyway, so what we can use a bomb calorimeter for is it's going to measure the change in the internal energy for combustion. So yes, we literally are going to blow things up. It's going to be a tiny contained explosion. And the key to using a bomb calorimeter, because we're going to talk about other calorimeters later, but if you have a bomb calorimeter, that tells you the reaction is at constant volume. So you calculate, we call that delta E change in energy. We like this, this is fun. So 
So when we had said that uh, internal energy equals Q minus pressure delta volume, if you don't change the volume, this goes away, which we like. If nothing moves, you don't do work. Yes, that's what we go for. So here's the reaction and equation you wanna know. The change in the energy of the reaction is the heat that is gained by the water. So here's how it works. It's pretty cool. You have a sealed container. It has to be sealed because we're at constant volume. And that is filled with oxygen. That would be this here, sealed container. And then this little container is placed in a water-filled insulated container. So this all say the rest of this is with water. Then you've got a trigger switch. And so you actually explode it, burn it. So the sample is, you ignite it, ignited. And you measure the temperature change of this in complete calorimeter. In this case, it's mostly gonna be water of the entire assembly. So, heat is released from this food and it goes into the calorimeter. The calorimeter is insulated. So that allows us to hopefully make the assumption that we're not losing additional heat to the atmosphere. So, we know that the heat release from, this is gonna be given to you in a problem. The heat from the calorimeter equals the heat capacity of the calorimeter, which will always be given because the mass of this calorimeter is not gonna change. So it's, gonna, it's just gonna give you a heat and then you're gonna measure the temperature change of the calorimeter. So that's our first part of the equation. We also know that the heat of the calorimeter, if it's gained by the calorimeter, what about the heat from the reaction? Where's the heat, where does the heat come from? The heat that's gained by the water in here. Where does it come from? Yeah, the combustion. So it's being released from the bomb. So it's negative. Heat is being released from the bomb to the calorimeter. The calorimeter is gaining heat. Yes? Reaction RxN? And then the heat of the reaction is the same as delta E. Again, this is pretty nebulous right now. There's a lot of equations. I'm gonna put it together for you in an example shortly. Don't worry. Because the volume is constant, no work is done, that makes things easy for chemists and we like that. All right. Now we're gonna do several examples here. We're doing several examples for a reason. Furthermore, a lot of times you want the heat of the reaction expressed per mole. So you divide reaction by the moles in the sample. So this is a several step process. First we have 1.010 uh, 1 grams of sucrose undergoes combustion, so that means it's burned up in a bomb calorimeter. The temperature, you're only gonna have, it's gonna talk about the temperature 
change. This is implied to be of the calorimeter. This thing isn't is going to disintegrate. It's being exploded, ignited, burning. So if you're not gonna have a temperature change for that. So this is the this is a temperature change in the calorimeter. And see here now they say let's go back to delta U. Delta U, delta E, whatever. So I don't like it. So this wants per mole for the combustion and it wants it in kilojoules per mole. And in this case, it's gonna tell you the heat capacity of the calorimeter, which is always determined separately. You don't have to do it. And it gives it to you. So the way that I work these problems, the first thing that I always do is calculate the heat from the calorimeter. So I'm gonna say heat from the calorimeter equals heat capacity of the calorimeter times delta T. If you prefer to say calorie meter, you can say that. All right, so heat from the calorimeter, what is our heat capacity? Yes, 4.90 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Units matter here. All right, what is our temperature change? Well, it's still final minus initial. Now, when you blow something up, does the temperature rise or fall? Rise, good, so you should always have a positive delta T. If you burn something up and you have a negative delta T, you've done something wrong. Your math is wrong. All right, so 28.33, Minus 24.92. All right, so do subtraction first. So you probably want me to show you all this work. Normally I don't show this step, but I will for you this time. Then we're going to multiply these. 4.9. So you should get something about 16.71 kilojoules. Yes, no, maybe? Yes, good. So that's the first step. Calculate heat from the calorimeter. Next step, you know, use this here. So this is the first step. This is the second step. This is the third step. That's how we're going to do it. So this, you know that heat from the calorimeter, if it gains by the calorimeter, it has to come from somewhere. Where does it come from? The reaction. Yes, so heat loss by the reaction. Combustion reactions are always exothermic. They are always releasing heat. So plug in 16.71 kilojoules, negative Q of the reaction. So that means heat from the reaction is negative 16.71 kilojoules. This makes sense. Heat gained by the calorimeter is lost by the reaction. The reaction releases heat. The reaction is exothermic. That is true. So this is our first step. This is our second step. Now it wants us to find in kilojoules per mole. We have kilojoules. We're good here. We got to deal with moles though. How do we find that? What's the problem give us? Grams. grams. It sure does. 1.010 grams of sucrose. Now, oh, I don't have a periodic table. I'm going to have to take a guess. All right, uh, 12.01 times 12, 1.08 times 22, 16 times 11. 
342.3, roundabout. Anybody else got anything like that? All right, 342.3, that comes from the periodic table. Gram sucrose equals one mole sucrose. Again, normally I do this last part all in one step, but since y'all like algebra, you tend not to like that. So I'm making an accommodation. So you should get a tiny number, 1.01 divided by that. Very, very small number. 0 0.00295 moles of sucrose. Yes? Okay, good. So now, again, the problem says we want kilojoules per mole. So what do we do? Yes, we divide. What goes on top? The kilojoules. Yes, what do we put for kilojoules? It is not 16.71. It is negative negative that's the important part here because this is an exothermic reaction heat is leaving the system the system the sucrose that is the system so negative 16.71 divide by 0 0.00295 moles look we have kilojoules per mole if you do not have a negative answer you have done it wrong. That's the good thing here. These answers should always be negative. So I got negative 50, 6, 63 kilojoules per mole. Again, you can use delta E, you can use delta U. It doesn't matter because volume is constant. You need to know how to do this. Let's do another one. All right. So again, we're just gonna be using this information. Go through, figure out what the problem wants us to find. So keywords here is when you go, which equations do I use? Keywords. Combustion bomb calorimeter. That means we're going to be using this same process. So bomb calorimeter means you're gonna have heat from the calorimeter, C calorimeter times delta T. So we've got hexane, which is a fuel gets burned, temperature in the calorimeter goes way up. We want delta U, if you want to call this delta E of the reaction, you can, I don't really care. It means the same thing. And we want it, we want to find it in kilojoules per mole. It gives us heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter there. Here. So first thing, get get in the habit of working these problems the same way every time. It helps. First thing, calculate the heat from the calorimeter. Notice the calorimeter is gaining heat, so it should always be positive. What is the heat capacity of the calorimeter given in the problem? 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius. What's our temperature change? Did somebody already figure it out? Twelve point two six. Yeah, that'll work. Twelve point two six degrees Celsius. Which you get from subtracting T final minus T initial, if you wanted to do that. Again, you don't have to show all the work. 
So heat gained by the calorimeter, 70.25 kilojoules. So if it's gained by the calorimeter, where does it come from? The reaction. Yes, so what is the heat of the reaction? Negative, yes. Again, you may think that that's redundant, but if you don't take the time to do it immediately after that, you're probably gonna forget the negative. When we work these out on the test, do you want us to write it like, kind of like that to show everything? I can give you partial credit when you, when you write it like that, okay. but uh, I have plenty of people that can keep track of units and stuff in their head and they put it on at the end and that's okay. But if they get it wrong, I can't give them anything. So again, whatever process that you find works for you, work it the same way every time you're going to make less errors, I should be able to follow it. And that works. Again, because I have made just about every possible error over the course of my life in these problems, I'm telling you the way that I have found where I make the least mistakes. And I'm still gonna make mistakes. But, so now we have the heat of the reaction, we have kilojoules, we need to work on moles. So let's work on moles next. What part of information in the problem do we use for this? The grams. So let's work on moles here. 1.550 grams. C6H14, we need a molar mass here, 86 point what? 17, 17. that works. C6H14, one mole C6H14. Uh, 1.550 divided by 86.17. And you probably get very, very small numbers for these. Uh, I'm just going to go with 180 moles C6H14 for completeness. So now we have kilojoules. Now we have moles. All we have to do now is put them together. So here, if you want to say delta U or delta E of the reaction, I don't care. We want kilojoules, which is this one, negative 70.25 kilojoules over how many moles you have, 0, 0.180 moles, negative 70.25 divided by that. Negative 39.05 kilojoules per mole. That's a nine. Yes, these problems are not hard. You just have to remember the steps. So heat of the calorimeter first, heat of reaction second, moles third, put it all together. or the system or the order that works best for you. I know I've had people that prefer to do the moles first. Fine, doesn't matter. Now let's look at a different situation here. I'm gonna use the same principle. Here we have a bomb calorimeter and we're talking about calibrating it. So we know that we our reaction released 5.23 kilojoules released causing the temperature of our water to rise 7.33 degrees Celsius. What in the world is the heat capacity of the calorimeter? All right, there's some extraneous information here that you could get really lost in the weeds. This is a very, very simple problem. Start in the same way. We know that the heat of the calorimeter equals heat capacity of the calorimeter times delta T. How much heat is gained by the calorimeter?
That's delta. 7.33 is delta T, yes. So, yes, 5.23. So, because we know that heat that's gained by the calorimeter is the heat that's lost from the reaction. This tells us the reaction releases this much heat. If the reaction releases this much heat, that's how much is gained by the calorimeter. So if you were thinking you need to convert this to grams and use specific heat and do this, that all that is completely unnecessary. You will get the same answer, 5.23. Lot of work, no reason. Heat capacity, calorimeter, delta T, it rises by 7.33. Look, you don't even have to subtract. That's how easy this problem is. Don't make it complicated. Yeah, all you gotta do is divide. So heat capacity of the calorimeter, 0 0.714. What's the units here? Kilojoules per degree Celsius. Very good. That's it. That's it. It's two lines. Wasn't that easy? See, you don't need, you did not need that information. All right, this also has a ton of unnecessary information. All right. How many calories? Notice this is capital C calories. Are in a hamburger has a serving size of 105 grams. 20% protein, 33% fat, 47% carbohydrates. Here, heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter is 8.39 kilojoules per Kelvin in this case. Increase of the water temperature is 13.2 kelvins. All right, there's a whole bunch of numbers that we do not need. Because all this is asking us is how many calories are in the burger. We don't care how big it is and we don't care what it's consisted of. None of that is necessary. We can use a different calculation if we want to figure that out, but that's something we do in 145. So this is in a bomb calorimeter. Start with the calorimeter calculation. C calorimeter times delta T. All right. Now, what's our heat capacity of the calorimeter? 8 yeah, 8.39 kilojoules per Kelvin. And our temperature change? 13.2 Kelvins. So don't make this hard. Kelvins are going to go away. 8.39 times 13.2. So 110.75 kilojoules. What is the problem asking us to find? Calories. Capital C calories. We have kilojoules. Can we convert it? Yes. So I'm just going to do my conversion here. How do you prefer to do the conversion? Kilojoules to joules? All right, let's do it that way. One kilojoule is 1,000 joules. Good. Now what do we do? Yeah, joules to calories. So this is one you have to remember. I'm not gonna give you 4.184 joules is one calorie. Is it a big C or little c calorie? Little c calorie, be careful there. So I always rewrite capital C calories as K-cals. One little c 
And then we know that 1,000 little c calories equals one k cal. Because when I start writing, I can't tell the difference in my own handwriting between a capital C and a lowercase c. So I tend to confuse myself. All right. 110.75 times a thousand divided by 4.184 divided by a thousand. All right. If anybody thinks that a hamburger or a cheeseburger or whatever this is only has 26.5 calories in it, I want to know where you got it. But. That is how this works out. We did the problem correctly. I'm going to say that the calorimeter was way off, though. Because that probably needs to be at least 260. Maybe more. Alright. Turn the page. 